So hi everyone and thank you for joining us uh, with the living legend that is Roger Aubrey. Thanks Rog for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> But it's, and, great to be a, it's great to be living, but also not a legend. <laughs> I don't know if you can determine whether you're a legend yourself, so uh, we can we can we can do that. That's no problem. A legend in my own imagination. Yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Um, and uh, uh, Roger has joined us to go deeper uh, when we talk about joy in the context of the fruit of the spirit. And uh, uh, we we didn't think there'd be anybody better to talk about it than Roger, because, well, for one reason, he is the smiling preacher. And uh, <laughs> if you're listening now, he's just pulled a fish face at us. Um <laughs> But uh, Rog has been known amongst uh, our uh, congregation of people here um, for, for decades now. And yeah. uh, we have uh, loved being under his ministry. And so it is with great joy that uh, we can have this conversation. <laughs> so um, I guess a good place to start, uh, Roger, is um, uh, what what is joy? I, I think we'll uh, maybe it'll be good to look at what it's not maybe from a worldly perspective as yeah. from a biblical ex perspective because the world does think differently to what scripture teaches yeah i think uh, i think that's a, that's a good start harry i mean we we have related words uh that i think obviously they have a link to what the bible calls joy things like um happiness pleasure delight um all all those things highs you know, thrills mm. um they are very uh, they're very good positive things uh and uh while the world and i think christians we will we will use those phrases like i'm happy today mm. or uh, i'm thrilled i'm, I'm really glad mm. Th those are good things um but, but i think they are not um they're not really what joy is because many of those things or all of those things are very circumstantial yeah because right now I say, well, there are, I'm happy about certain things, but I'm sad or angry about other things. Uh, and so, but joy is not like that. It's not like I'm, I'm, joy, I'm joyful about this, mm -hmm. but I'm not joyful about that. I think joy is a different um, thing altogether in some ways, but the others kind of can be aspects of it. Mm -hmm. like. Yeah, yeah. 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 So then um, <clears throat> what then, I guess, is joy in, in yeah. that? Uh, it, would joy then be the, uh, uh, is it dependent on circumstance? I think would be a good. Yeah. Uh, no. Simple answer. <laughs> it's not. Um, in fact, since we, we talked and uh, it's been good for me to think about it again. Uh, for me, there are some key things, and the key thing is that um, I always go to Romans 14, mm. verse 17, which defines the kingdom, and it says the kingdom of God is in the Holy Spirit, mm. and the kingdom of God is righteousness, it's peace, and it's joy in the Holy Spirit. So for me, when I read the scriptures, joy um, is a characteristic a spiritual characteristic that the Holy Spirit produces in me that is produced in fruit, the fruit of the Spirit. And so if I follow the line, um, the kingdom of God is righteousness. Now, that's a massive thing. But if I know that I am righteous, yeah, that's a massive thing in itself, isn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, the follow-on from that, then, is peace i have peace with god i have peace with myself mm -hmm. and i have peace with others and i know that we're skimming this but then the third outcome then is the natural thing is well that produces joy so joy yeah. is not something that i have to go and get if you like joy is a characteristic of the holy spirit that he produces and brings to us every believer so our natural uh, a natural way of being we are righteous we are in peace and we we have joy yeah it's it, it's who we are yeah, yeah, yeah. something i go and get yeah very good 
very good so, yeah yeah so uh, and and underpinning all of this is faith isn't it yes because we yeah because we, we're only we're only righteous by virtue of what jesus has done for us yes. and so and so then we have to choose whether to believe in the promises of god or not yes it's like it's like everything <clears throat> else um you you have to appropriate everything yeah. that i am righteous even if i may not feel like it or if there's things raging around me i can know god's peace mm. and in the same way in exactly the same way there may be many things come my way that make me feel unhappy or attack that but it's it's this undergirding uh, and uh, the, the joy as nehemiah says the joy of yahweh is your strength it's not my joy and um it's, I was just looking at some scriptures, and it says when Paul says, um, now rejoice, Philippians chapter 4, rejoice, but he says rejoice in the Lord. Mm. I'm not re uh, and again I say rejoice. So he's not saying, come on, cheer up. He says, no, remind yourself, re you rejoice in who God is. Yeah. And then um, Jesus says, uh, about in the Sermon on the Mount, he's talking about the Beatitudes, and he says, um, when people speak bad, bad about you when they do these, he says, um, uh, rejoice and be glad. It's not a masochism, because he says yeah. rejoice, and then he uses this other word, be glad, which is another word for joy, which is a, an exultant joy. Yeah, it's the, it's the word used in Hebrews 1, where it says, God has anointed his son above his fellows with the oil of joy, that's the there's two words for joy, and that's an intense, exuberant joy. And then Jesus says um, in John 15, he said, he says, my joy will be in you, mm. so your joy will be complete. So when I read the scriptures, I, I, I see that joy is not something that I go and get or that I have and I can lose. It's a characteristic of the kingdom that is there in me. Now, you're quite right. By faith, I have got to appropriate that. Less like I have to appropriate everything else. Yeah. 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 And th there's a choice in that, isn't there? Oh, it's all choice, yes. Yeah. yeah. How it, will I respond? What my, my attitude will be? Yeah. And, and, the, and the fruit of the Spirit is a lot to do with attitude, isn't it? Yeah, it's the, um, uh, the if, if I truly believe in what god has done for me then it's that i am righteous righteous and i have i have peace because of that because i'm not fearing condemnation i'm not fearing the wrath of god exactly. um, but but then a a reasonable logical choice in light of all of the the promises and all the work that god has done to redeem us and to restore us and to renew us is joy yes uh, you know when when you when you live and breathe and um, are in relationship with Jesus to such an extent like that, that the, the natural decision is to live in that joy. <laughs> it's, a, it's a reasonable choice. It's, it's a reasonable choice. And for me, realizing that the word, the word joy in the New Testament, um, which means to be glad, rejoice, to be well off, to be happy, Mm -hmm. but it's linked very much to the word grace yeah it is isn't it it's kara it comes yeah. from the same word grace it's kara yeah uh, and cairo and it comes from the word charis and so for me it always throws back into who god is that the righteousness and the peace and the joy are all linked to the fact of god's grace and you see how everything is intertwined and interlinked so if i it's not like joy but if i if I understand the grace and the mercy and the love of God, absolutely, yeah. and no matter what, that joy is just, it's just that constant. Uh, it's not a cheesy cheerfulness that's unreal. You know, it's, you know, we, it's not like, well, you've got to smile, <laughs> smile through. No, I don't think it is that. But it's that understanding that, you know, goodness me, God, God's grace. Is yeah. So, I mean, uh, that's that's really, really good and really important as well, because um, and it, it's, it'll be good for us to discuss. So how how to say now we, we live in this attitude of joy 
yeah. uh, and and that's that's ours by right of what Jesus has done. We're appropriating and and everything that we've said before, but at the same time, it's um, uh, it doesn't mean that we should shut down our emotions. Absolutely, it doesn't mean that we should negate all of the other stuff that is that is going on. And so, how um, how do you when so we've lost a a brother, a, a friend, a very good friend of you, uh, just recently. How do you um, how do you maintain that attitude of joy in the midst of grief, in the midst of loss, in the midst of suffering? Um, how how does that work? I think that's a really important question, you know, because uh, uh, we do get tough times. Mm. Um, you you've been through that, you know, in your own family with health of your children. Yeah, and I have the same in my own health. Uh, and uh, there's things like depressions and illnesses. <clears throat> I love the fact that the Bible doesn't gloss over things like depression, and yeah. illness. Yeah, it tackles them head on. Yeah, it doesn't say take two pills in Jesus' name. It it deals very much with like the psalmist who says, you know, you know, I, I, I'm really in trouble here, mm. and uh, how to get out of that? Paul himself had terrible oppositions and. Elijah. Elijah had mental struggles. Um, mm. uh, and I like that. People have, there's loss, there's grief, there's um, child infants, uh, inf uh, child mortality. Yeah. Uh, they're all real experiences. Um, this, I know this is very subjective, but for me, uh, I find that. Uh, it helps me when I'm real with God. Okay. When I can come to him and say, Lord, I don't understand this. I don't like this. I don't get this. God, I don't believe God is phased by, it's not my lack of faith, it's, but it's by my, I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. I don't understand it. And I'm learning more and more that, uh, Bill Johnson said this recently. This is a message by Bill Johnson when he lost his own wife, um, and he he was saying about uh, the, the the fact that there's mis there's mystery involved. There's things we don't understand, and I have given up trying to understand everything that happens to me. That doesn't mean I become fatalistic, but I'm thinking, Lord, there's enough things in life where I look back and I know. I have seen your goodness. Mm. I, I've seen your hand. I've seen you do stuff. And uh, I don't get why you, why this is happening. Mm. Um, and I'm still trying to work this one out, Harry. And I, I'm trying to answer the question in some way. Mm. The, the Romans 8, where Paul says, now we know, that's a cue, now we know that in everything that God works everything for good to those who love him. Now, sometimes we think, well, yeah, God is doing the good stuff <laughs> and the bad stuff, no, but and I don't understand this. But it's, I believe it's true that God, who doesn't institute everything, I don't believe God institutes everything that happens to us. He doesn't inflict us with COVID mm -hmm. or cancer or AIDS, that's, that's not God. But in the mystery of God, God says, it's a bit, the analogy, I know it's a poor analogy, it's a bit like he takes the mixture, the ingredients to make this cake. Mm. And he said, in the way only he can, he said, I'm going to take that. And I'm going to take that. The good, the bad, the indifferent, mm -hmm. things you don't understand, your successes, your failures, all these things, I'm going to take them all. Mm. And I am going to work them together, not discard that. I'm going to work them together. And the only the way I can for your good. Yeah. My, my thing is, I got to let him do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's <clears throat> faith. Yeah. And that really means the joy comes. The joy comes from me. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. yeah. It's not fatalism. It's 
He knows what he's doing. My father knows what he's doing. Yeah, and so it's it's coming back to that revelation of who you think God is. And so I remember when you, you came up um, uh, last time and you were talking and teaching on faith and you it was very, very helpful. And faith is this. Do you agree with what God says? Yeah. And uh, if God describes him as being a provider, um, if he describes himself as being sovereign over everything, if he describes himself as having a plan and purpose, not just for us, but for all of humanity across eternity, um, do we choose to believe that? or not yes um, and uh, yeah it's uh and in in doing that in the midst of our suffering um we can still it's it still becomes the reasonable choice doesn't it in face of everything that we that we are looking at that we can choose joy we can live in the peace of god yes and allow that to because when it comes down to where else can i go mm. yeah if god if, if if I serve the God of Abraham, where else can I go? Yeah, there was um, with that um, the verse that you mentioned in Romans eight. I uh, read a book by N.T. Wright talking about COVID and the pandemic and everything, and he he said that one of the ways in which you can translate that verse is um, you could say that that God works things all together with those that love Him for good. Yes. And so um, we have this, that God works everything together for good for those that love him, but also he uses the people that love him to work good out in the world. Oh, I believe that. That's and, a good translation, yeah. Yeah, and when there is that that suffering, and the, I remember my, my grandfather in his later years, he, watching the news and, <clears throat> and really struggling with seeing all of the suffering that's in the world, kind of forgetting that that's been the... The, the story of humanity over the generations but you say what's god doing why isn't god fixing this and the you know the answer is that god's raising up his church god is raising up me and you and and all of the people that love him to be the answer for all the evil that there is in the world uh, yeah, and i think that's the that's the, the thing that we are we are part of the answer not part of the problem um and uh, part of, a, I think, of sharing the gospel with people is that when we we are living ex in exactly the same world, mm. we face exactly the same pressures as our non-Christian friends and family. Yeah. But they see that we um, we are more than conquerors, mm. that we're not immune, yeah. that we suffer, we get sick, and we, we lose jobs. But we also have great successes. Yes when you know we tithe yeah and we give offerings and we're generous and we're sowing and they say well how on earth how on earth does that work <laughs> you know the world says you know it's a recession don't spend any money and you think but you're give you're giving this money away <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sowing it <laughs> <laughs> and so i think the whole thing because it's not just a negative or the problem it's it's everything about us we radiate this um, and you talk, I appreciate what you said about the smile, but um, some people sometimes will just say to me, well, you, you smile a lot, don't you? <laughs> and I say, well, yes, I do, because life is good. Mm. I say, yeah, you know, you, yeah, my, my life, you, you know my life, my life has ups and downs and struggles and yeah. things like that. But overall, life is good. Yeah. And I, I, I have some friend, I have a particular friend of mine who's not a believer yet, who, like me, I had a heart attack, as you know, seven, many years ago, and he had one um, a couple of years ago during lockdown and uh, couldn't see him, but we talked. But because he, know, he knows well, the path, I didn't know him then, but he knows the path I walked through it, and I'd shared it with him, and being honest and being real. So when it came to him, um, we were talking one day and he said uh, were you ever frightened and I said yes and it was almost like oh really? <laughs> and uh, I said when I was frightened and he just started to cry and then um, we were talking and because uh, he knows me and uh, then I said uh, as I said of course I have one advantage over you. And he said, what's that? And I just went, 
<laughs> and he went, yeah, you do. Mm. I didn't need to say. I just went, yeah, yeah. because he knows and says, it's real for you. Yeah. I know you walk the path I walk, but you, you're you different from me. Yeah. You have a, you have a faith and a yeah. confidence and know that you're in the hands of this God that he doesn't yet believe. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, that's when it works. Yeah, and it's um you have the um the the whole idea of, of God working things together for good for us um yes. can look very different to what we think it should look like. Yes. Yeah, the the story of Job, don't you, where um the the amount of suffering that he goes through is just unimaginable, really. Yeah. And you have this um you have the question that is brought to God at the beginning when he, he has the, the divine counsel all before him and, and Satan, the one who stands opposed to God, comes before and says, you know, Job only loves you because you keep blessing him. Yeah. Take away the blessings and he's not going to love you anymore. And it's this question, isn't it, of do we love God for the good that he does to us or do we love God because he's God? Exactly. And I think that's the issue, Harry. I don't love God. I love him because he does things for me. Of course I do. Yeah. And I think at times in my life, when I first got saved, that's why I loved him. Because he saved me. Because he did these things for me. Yeah. The process, which I think is still ongoing, is, no, I love him and serve him because he's God. Yeah. And he's not. Sometimes I look and I think, God, if I were God, I wouldn't do it that way. And then he says, it's a good job you're not God then. Yeah, and that's why I'm not God. <laughs> and I also think as well, Mike, in, in, in sharing in sharing our faith with people, um, I'm not selling God, but I want to say to people, do you know what? It's great. Mm. Best thing I ever did. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm saying, hey, if you become a Christian, it's going to be miserable. It's going to be terrible. You're going to have this sin complex. You're going to complete, you know, in, you have to go to a thousand meetings a day. You've got to read your Bible five times a week and never understand it. It's going to be tough. It's going to be awful. It's going to get worse and worse. I, was like, I don't want that. Mm. It's tough enough as it is. So you <laughs> go, the kingdom of God yeah. is the rule and life of Jesus. It's righteousness and it's peace and it's joy in the Holy Spirit. Who wouldn't want that? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, um, it's re- uh, reassessing your values in life isn't it yes. I, was, I was listening to a podcast this morning and they were they were talking about leviticus which as we know is the the easiest book to understand in the oh, in yes. <laughs> but they were talking about the um the law where um about cursing god blaspheming god and that um god puts in place that if you if you blaspheme god that um you uh, you need to be killed. You need to be executed for for doing that. And in the midst of that, we can see, oh well, that sounds really, really harsh. And the the only other the only other crime that deserves execution, um, in in that kind of sense, is when another person is killed, um, when you commit murder. And the point that they were trying to say is that God was really impressing the value of who God was if if you deserve to be executed for killing another person um then how much more so if you curse the name of god you know and and what value do you ascribe to god what value do you ascribe to who he is how important is he in your life and um and when we when we even begin to grasp that when we have that kind of mustard seed of faith of trusting in in who he is then that it's much easier for that to set the precedent for our lives rather than all of the circumstance and stuff, isn't it? That's yes, it is. I find, um, I mean, I've been a Christian fifty odd years now. <clears throat> um, I, I I fall into a trap. If you think, well, I, I, I want God has got to be relevant to the society, and he, he can become a very modern God. <laughs> yeah. You can become a 21st century God or a 20th century God, and he's, I mean, as we know, he's the God of all ages. And I, I'm still trying to get my head around this, and I'm, I'm beginning to experience this more and more. But I find when I'm just 
reading the scriptures or praying and listening and sitting with them thinking, I'm actually in the presence of the God of Abraham. Mm. And like he didn't begin with them. <laughs> but it helps me in my time frame. <laughs> I'm not that old. But thinking <laughs> he, he is, I, I am serving the same being, the same mm. God. That he is not this modern product. Yeah. He is God. And it, it, I find it quite, and I use the word awesome, mm. I think, I can know this God. And I think then, I get joy. Wow. That he will, he would want to be with me. <laughs> and that my life, and I see his track record in the scriptures, my life is in his hands. Mm. And no matter what happens, uh, everything is okay. Yeah. That's hope, isn't it? Everything's okay. It's yeah. Your height. And uh, I, 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 there's a, a verse, I think, in the Psalms, it says, you know, the lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. You know, it's not like, yeah, all, all my troubles are over. No, but just think, do you know what? Life. Life is good. Um, it is. Mm. Uh, you have that um, that story in Acts, don't you? Where um, is it? Paul and Barnabas. They've gone to city in Antioch. They're mm -hmm. preaching the gospel, and everybody's loving what's going on. And so they uh, they um, they all invite the Gentiles to come out the, the next week. And then suddenly the jealousy starts to hit, and they end up persecuting them and and kicking them out of the town and uh we we read don't we that they uh they shake the dust off their yes. sandals which jesus instructs his disciples to do when um when anybody rejects them so it's quite like an angry thing and then it says that they walked off filled with the holy spirit and with joy <laughs> and it's yeah, just it's that's not a that's not a persecution complex or a masochism yeah uh, and you think, yeah, you get that. And you know, you, you, you as well know we have friends who who are persecuted seriously, yeah. severely. And I've just got to say that you know, my friends in certain countries, they are the most they're incredibly joyful. I think it's because they have a real sense of perspective. Yeah. They have a real of what what it is all about. Yeah. But their joy yeah. is centered in who God is. And then yeah. no matter what happens to them, yeah. Yeah, I remember um, hearing a story of um, uh, two people that had been that were under severe pressure um, out in, I think it was in a country in the Middle East, and uh, they were asked the question, "Why do you keep on going?" And they just said, "We've seen the city, <laughs> we've seen the city of God, and uh, how can we not keep on doing what we need to do?" And and it's that. Again, it, it just keeps on going back to that deep sea to trust of who God is. Yes, I, I find that joy keeps me going. Yeah. If I do stop and I center in on things that are adverse, um, and things come, like you think uh, uh, depression can come or an illness can come, Yeah. Um, mental health, or all these things, um, a long term chronic illness, uh, an unexpected loss, grief morning they're all very real things and i think you know we we know for our friend who's going to be with the lord his family um will will go through a time of mourning and grief and that is perfectly reasonable yeah absolutely i was with a friend yesterday the son of our friend and he was laughing and he was crying at the same time mm. when we were talking he's just he's just going through his season of grief for his yeah. father and he'll walk that walk as long as it takes. But he, you know, he, the joy of the Lord will be his strength. Yeah. Carry him through. And I think that's why for me, Harry, it's, uh, it's a bit of an old chestnut with me. But uh, the verse when Paul says, no, in one Thessalonians, give thanks in all circumstances. Mm. No matter what, in the good. You know, because it's not just joy for when, thank you, Lord. Thank you. And as we said, it's not for everything, but thank you. You are good. 
you're for me you bring me through thank you thank you for this day thank you for this thank you for that yeah it's an attitude and i find um as our friend used to say it may be obviously brian shut but he talked about the attitude of gratitude yeah and it was so true i think if you're if you're grateful i think that's an aspect of joy um, yeah I, I don't think there's any ground for curmudgeonly behavior and grumpiness and rudeness and, um, and just uh, spite. I think there is room for lament. Yeah. Grief, mourning, crying out to God. I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't like it. God's not yeah. by that. But then he says, okay, I hear you, but what choice are you going to make now, Raj? Are you going to move on? Are you going to catch this? Yeah. How does um how does anger fit into it? Because um, I'm kind of reminded of the time when Jesus was in the temple and he's creating his uh, his whip of cords, cord of whips, whatever it is, and uh, goes and turns over all the tables in the temple, which was a a monumental task in itself. But he does it in in this righteous anger we would describe it. How does that how does that marry together with a life of joy? Yeah, I don't find anger, uh, it's a good question, actually. I don't find anger as contrary to joy. I find um, anger is not temper. Mm. It's not, Jesus never lost his temper. But he got angry at uh, hypocrisy uh, and hard-heartedness, injustice, religion, mm -hmm. replacing God. Those are the things that made him angry. Uh, and I think there's a place for us to be angry. Yeah. Not angry at people in some way or losing our temper, but angry at, at those things because I, I, uh, because we think they're not right. They rob people. They rob God. They're, they're wrong. Mm. They, in fact, they offend our sense of joy. Okay. Very good. Because they, they say that your hard heartedness, the, the Pharisee, your hard heartedness to this guy if you if you were joyful you'd want me to heal you know you you wouldn't be robbing the people you wouldn't have this attitude if you if you knew what joy was mm. uh, and i think that's why it, it's the anger is not spite or just spouting off it's this it's almost it says doesn't it that scripture just said it, the uh, zeal for your house mm. it's because of a passion that he had for the city mm. that passion is oh <laughs> and anything that stands against that no 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 um and i jesus showed both those qualities yeah you, know, you could see him with the poor and the downtrodden and and people who were genuinely saying um i don't believe can you help me <laughs> Can yeah. I believe you? He says, yeah, sure. Or some, someone says something and he just says, you're not far from the kingdom. Yeah. Or, can you heal me? Yes. If you can. If I can. <laughs> of course I can. But it's this attitude that says, no. God says, no, I'm standing against that. So yeah. I get angry at stuff, yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm angry at... Uh, certain uh, political systems yeah i'm angry at uh, the current state of what russia is allowed to do in ukraine mm. the international community will go so far as long as it doesn't touch their their business and their economies i find that I, that's i get angry at that because i think that's not just mm. yeah it's being a, a, aware but allowing the i guess when that when the anger comes um trying to be aware of where that comes from yes if it's if it's offending you or if it's offending the holy spirit within you or both then yes. what's um uh, and then and just offering that to the lord in in that moment and then being able to act appropriately it's the uh well, i mean with jesus what was great was that he was angry and then he did something about it um, yes and it's and, it is that anger it's not fuming and you know and going on social media and being caustic and <clears throat> 
it's 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 fused together with love isn't it yes and uh love is always something that produces an action yes and i think the scripture that you just put about jesus in the temple his motivation was that it was the court of the gentiles that there was a whole raft of people who'd been shut out yeah and he said you can't do this yeah my this is a prayer for all people he made it a den of robbers yeah and that's what that was his overriding thing the honor of god and he says but you're robbing people mm. ordinary everyday people should be allowed in here and you've made this thing into a business yeah you said something before which um which triggered a, a thought do, do you think that um that living a life uh filled with the joy of the holy spirit acts as a um as like a a buffer against falling into legalism that's a that's a really yes it must do because if it's i'm just thinking as i'm going yes yeah. <laughs> just processing one of your questions <laughs> i love your question <laughs> yeah if i read it back harry if if this characteristic is a characteristic of the holy spirit mm. righteousness peace and joy in the spirit mm. then there's nothing legalistic about it and so righteousness is not self-righteousness mm. peace is not compromise mm. um, and joy is this overriding characteristic of the holy spirit and because of that then and I'm, I'm trying to process in my thinking now. Yes, it must be an antidote to legalism because the Holy Spirit will never keep me into legalism. Mm. And so the joy, the joy that he produces doesn't produce a slapdashness or, or just ah, anything can go. Yeah. This is not their standards, but it's this burning joy that is almost like a plumb line mm. and says, uh, because legalism and can stretch us into it can become very narrow yeah self-centered can't it self-righteous yeah and if i do something i've got to do something but joy is linked to grace and grace is it's nothing to do with what you do mm. it's to do with god's acceptance of you and uh, which then leads you to do stuff, isn't it? It's it's just the yes. way that yeah yeah we're motivated by grace yeah. So yeah. Uh, I mean that's been a journey for me, <laughs> but uh, you know whereas I thought well if I do this God will accept me more yeah I don't do that uh, and but I think no I'm motivated by grace thinking a God will not give up on me. Mm. And what I do or what I don't do doesn't make him love or accept me more. So yeah. my motivation for my actions is, is grace. It's so if, if there are people that are listening or watching this now and they they uh, are maybe kind of just feeling a bit triggered that, that maybe they are in this kind of trapped in this legalism um, and are, are, are almost doing the kind of spiritual disciplines out of a sense of duty, um and and without that joy what would you say to to people that are in that in that moment i wouldn't cast away things just because there are there are disciplines that we have mm. we do stuff we read the scriptures we pray mm -hmm. we tithe we 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 uh we join with our brothers and sisters we break bread mm. we do all these those are good things mm. <laughs> we share our faith I think it's, uh, for me, it's why do I do those things? Yeah. So I'm not, uh, it's not saying like I cast aside those things. It's why I do those things. So I still do very much the same similar things that I've always done, but they're thinking, oh, see, I used to think uh, I attend church on a Sunday morning because that's what I got to do. You're a bad Christian if you don't do it. Yeah. Now, I still believe, you know, because... Yeah. I'm part of a community, but I think, no, I do it because I want to do it. It pleases my father. So it's it's not throwing away things and just thinking, well, I'm just here and I'm just going to you know, 
let the Holy Spirit lead me. And if he doesn't tell me, I'll just stay in bed all day. Or, or if I'm not, if I don't feel like bringing a tide, or if I don't feel like, yeah, yeah. it's not that. But uh, I believe the Holy Spirit is in me, and he's he's allowing me to get in on what he's doing. Mm. Yeah. And he's, he's about the business of the kingdom and the church and the city. And it's like, wow, it's, uh, it's an adventure. Yeah. So I'm still doing very much. I would encourage people, don't just throw everything out. Just, and it's not overanalyzing. It's just thinking. And I think for me, the, 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 the last two years of lockdowns and COVID um, has forced me back very much into... Um, what does it mean for me to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? Simplifying. Mm. You know, I, I follow Jesus. What does that look like in my life? Mm. Um, and I think pe if people ask that question, I can't answer it for them. Mm. I can't answer it for me. But it helped me saying, Roger, what does it mean for you to be a disciple of Jesus? What does that look like? And how does it impact you? And how does mm -hmm. it impact your family? How does it impact others? Um, uh, and that I think that it's almost coming back and saying, kingdom is righteousness, is peace, is joy in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So me, what's my relationship with the Holy Spirit like? Mm -hmm. If I foster my relationship with the Spirit, um, that's going to take me on an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's nothing like it. No. Um, I don't know if that's answering the question. It's just what I find for me. Yeah, I, I think it's that um, uh, not trying to treat um, being with God is like a, is something that's transactional. I do this so I can get this or, or whatever. It's that it's treating it as a relationship. Yes. Um, I'm married and I've got kids and I spend time with my wife and my kids because I want to build relationship with them, not because I want to get stuff out of it. The yes. stuff that I get out of that is is just a, a quite a happy add-on or a negative add-on. Uh, mm -hmm. My son woke up at ten to six this morning. I was not blessed by that. <laughs> but um, well, I woke at ten to six this morning because I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> Run to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, but yeah, it's that. Uh, it, it, and we all can kind of fall into that can't we um it's so easy to fall into that because yes. we know that god is good and that god wants to bless us and and help us to live a life in abundance and all that kind of stuff and um uh but it's that going back to that job thing do we love god because of who he is or do we love god because of what he gives us yes. and it, it's trying to break free from that that particular box of thinking i guess yes it's, it's really really important um, it, it, how, it always brings me back to who is who is God? Hmm. Yeah, the most simple, the most profound question, <laughs> if not the most profound question. Yeah. Yes. How important do you think joy is, just in terms of um, reaching people with the good news of Jesus? How how influential do you think a uh, a joyful church would be in the world, as opposed to an, a, a church that's not joyful? Oh, I, I think it's a secret weapon. <laughs> I mean, if you think just naturally, an invitation to, to, to come to a church meeting, someone or thinking, would you like to uh, partake in this? And uh, you, you think, well, are these people are miserable. You know, they, they don't smile. They're caustic. They're rude. You think, we want to join that. Mm -hmm. uh, and the world's a cruel place. I mean, it has great times of happiness and yeah. celebration and joy. Um, I know all the people in England today because this is the day after the ladies won the yeah. Euro, which is fantastic. And it was great to see the happiness and the celebration and the excitement. And you think, wow, all the and all the young girls now are going to want to play football and yeah. profession. I think fantastic. It's great. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. You know? And you just think, 
that's why I love it when people come along to our meetings and they're not always all, you know, you know there are times when we're you know, thinking we, we have to address you know, something that we lost someone or or the call to repentance or any call to repentance so we're thinking your folks our attitude's been awful about this and yeah. people see reality but i i believe uh, that uh, one of the reasons people liked following jesus especially children because he was joyful mm. you know you've got kids i've got grown up kids i've got grandkids <laughs> they do not like misery guts <laughs> <laughs> no they, they do. like they like people who are happy and smiling. And I, again, it's not this cheesy, charismatic unreality. It's just, well, these people are genuine. They actually enjoy life. And it's great. Yesterday in our meeting, you know, people, visitors, but people come and uh, we have some testimonies. And they're very real, you know, testimonies of, uh, we have a couple of family in the church. Two of their children have a very rare genetic condition. Only 400 people in the whole of the UK have it. Wow. And there are only four in South Wales, and two of them are their children. Wow. And yet they're both growing up and miracle children. They're, they, should, they should just be ill all the time, and they're not. Wow. So people hear a very real testimony. Mm -hmm. And they think, and, um, think, wow, this is, and the, and the guy giving it is very honest and real. He said, but the Lord is working in our life. <laughs> well, to me, people saying, wow, that's great. It's good news, isn't it? It's good. The gospel is good news. Yeah. And good news is, this is life. This is the kingdom. This is Jesus. It's good. Yeah. We're not selling a product of, you know, this is the best thing, you know, the zingy, zingy, zingy. It's just thinking, yeah, it's, this is great. Yeah. This is yeah. fantastic. <laughs> It, it's um i think as well it, it it identifies the church as being something that's totally different and in that you know the, the world is ruled by the self at the moment isn't it it's the um uh, i am what i am and i'm in charge of making myself happy and it would, no wonder there's a mental health epidemic at the moment and it's real yeah and it's very very real but it's the the where where does that rule and authority come from and and for the world it's it's through the self or it's through what other people think of me oh yeah, yeah. There's a, yes there's an image that you have to you, know, absolutely. you have to conform to this image absolutely and we we just find time after time of how it's uh how it's just not working at all and when you see the the deep-seated joy that you get from people that know and love jesus and a community of people that know and love jesus it's just radically different to what the world offers i i was with a um with somebody a few months back and um uh they were going through a tough time um uh and it was essentially they just believed false things about themselves um they were um just damaging thoughts and all that kind of stuff and I just got them to confess out loud what they thought God believed of them. So that God loves me and that uh, God's got a purpose and a plan for my life and that he's always going to provide for me and um, that uh, I'm totally forgiven, I'm free, all that kind of stuff. And it was the first time they ever said anything like that out loud. Wow. And you could just see the change um, because, because they started to believe what God had said brings you back to what you were saying earlier it's yeah. just to do with faith yeah and then it's uh as we've you know we've been laboring this for many years it's speaking out what you believe yeah because the voices are speaking to us and what, what we're speaking to ourselves what we believe and uh, i think that's why we can't get joy i find that my attitude changes when i actually believe and i speak when I speak well of God, I speak well of myself. Yeah. I speak well of other people. Yeah. They might be driving up the wall. And the Lord says, well, pray for them. Why will bless them? You think, oh. <laughs> he says, well, <clears throat> it does. It, it, and, and I think that's incredible what you just said about that person. First time ever they said those things. First time ever. But you could just see the change that yes. it had on them. But it's the... 
that the gospel offers something radically different to the world. And if we're just inviting people to come into our lives because they're good, they're going to come into something that isn't attainable for themselves. They've got to come into a whole new narrative of how their their world and how their life works. And that's together with the Holy Spirit, isn't it? It's Yes. That's the the power of our story. Absolutely. Yeah. I think uh, the power of our story, every one of us has a story. We've all come from somewhere. Yeah. They're all different. My story is different from yours, but they're all stories. And I think when I I find, you know, because we were going, never talk about yourself. I think, no, I'll talk about this. I'll tell my story. Because our story is, people can't gainsay our story. Mm -hmm. And, And the Bible is story yeah true story yeah but this is what happened to me yeah to my friend who with a heart attack i said this is what happened to me mm. and and this is how where i am now wow. yeah you walk the same path. yeah i walk the same path but my i have a, i'm at a different place yeah Absolutely. and i think you're right so it's when you tell the story and i think, and I think it's important the right to encourage people tell us your story absolutely and that whole the the attitude of gratitude it just helps you to remember what it is that's taken place and yeah. i've started um trying to to at the end of the day to just kind of replay my day just before the lord and uh, uh i'm amazed at the stuff that i'm remembering now <laughs> that <laughs> happened and just enjoying those moments and or you know if there's stuff that i've not done that's been right and all that kind of stuff but but um, just being thankful for all that stuff that God has done and taking the time to be aware of it and to be in the presence of God with it, it helps you to tell your story and to tell aspects of your story more often yes. because it's it's right there. It's right at the forefront of your mind. It's the that whole, um, the the encouragement, isn't it, in uh, that that Moses gives to the, to the people to to write it on their foreheads. Yes. <laughs> to write yeah. it everywhere so that everyone can see. Is all that the... why you and I like this? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I've got a lot of space in my forehead. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think as well, it's you you, you referred earlier uh, to the, the city. Mm. And I think when Jesus says about you know, the, the, the city on the hill, yeah, and, uh, we are the light of the world. Yeah. And I think joy is a massive thing with that because people are looking, thinking, look at that, it shines. The Zion, Zion shines with the glory of God, doesn't it? Yeah. And uh, I think it's that, well, those people, they're just like us, but they're not like us at all. You know, they're, some of them are slap heads like you and me, but there's something about them. What is it? There's a quality to them. Yeah. They have something we don't have. Mm. And I think peace is another thing with that. And, yeah. Absolutely. And this righteousness is that it's not this self-righteousness, but there we're living with this sense of who we are. Yeah. And what God has made us. And uh, I think the joy, uh, I, I like that joy isn't something that we try to produce. It's just, but you're, they will say, but you're happy. So, yeah. You say, no, it's the joy of the Lord. I yeah, am. <laughs> Well, the, the joy will produce that emotion, won't it? That's the yeah. I remember, I remember walking down the main street in Cardiff so, well, a couple of years before the end the lockdown, and uh, I was approached by a Harry Krishna monk. Usually, I give him a wide berth, but uh, he got me, and uh, and he said, "Can I ask you a question?" I said, "Sure." And he said, "Do you ever think about peace?" And I said, uh, "Yeah, I think about it all the time." <laughs> And it's like shock, shock. <laughs> then he said the most strange thing to me. He said, "Can I say something?" I said, "Yes." He said, "You look like you have it." And all of a sudden, I realised this conversation just took on a whole new dimension. Yeah, very good. Eventually, I won't go. But eventually, over 15, 20 minutes, I thanked him. But I managed to say, "What you see is Jesus Christ." Mm. Oh wow! So it's not me. Yeah, you actually see him. Mm. Kind of freaked him out a bit, but, but unconsciously, I was just going. Sh- if you if you know me, I never go shopping. If I'm going shopping, I'm on a, I'm a man with a mission. 
<laughs> so I wasn't walking down the street going, I was just, I was just going, but he right. said something to me and I thought, you saw something that I wasn't even conscious of. Yeah. And I think the world sees that. Yeah, uh, it does. Amen. Would you, um, Roger, just, um, would you pray for anybody that is listening, that is watching, that will in the future, just that they would um, come to know um, the joy of the Lord in new and profound ways. Mm. Yeah, sure. And that'll be a great way to end. Okay. <laughs> Father, we thank you that uh, you are a good God. Yeah. Uh, everything you do is good. And thank you that the fruit of the Spirit uh, is who you are. Mm. Holy Spirit is who you are. And thank you that when you come into us, you, you make us righteous, you bring us peace, and you give us the, the joy of God, which is our strength. Mm -hmm. Thank you we don't have to struggle to get it. Thank you it's who we are. Yeah. We are. And I just pray for any friends right now, and for those who don't know you yet, that they will see that there's, that there's something about being a Christian. It's, it's not just getting sins forgiven or following a bit away it's 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 a totally different kind of life yeah but i pray for friends who might be just disengaged at the moment thinking i, I don't really get this thank you holy spirit that you understand this and that you care and i just pray for them that you'll help them just to take away condemnation and a sense of struggle and a sense of failure yeah or even heal them of hurts and pains, frustrations, disappointments, disappointments in you, disappointments in themselves. And just to know that everything is in your hands and that you love them and care for them. And I just thank you right now that we're part of your kingdom and that because we're in your kingdom, we can claim all these things. And no matter what, if we're going through tough times, or we're going through depressions or illnesses, loss or grief, you understand that even in those times, that to know the joy of the Lord is our strength. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all who will watch this and listen to this. We want to bless you. Amen. 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 Well, thank you so much, Rog. Thank you, Harry. That was a fantastic conversation. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.